I start out with the uh, song of the universe. All of us are here because our heart is beating. Our lungs are expanding and contracting. This is not just a drum, but it's got water in it because water is life. We're going to talk in a little while about how even Sky Woman follows the water to come to this place. If you look at your own birth and if everything went according to natural law, your mother's water broke, the contractions start, and you're literally pushed from this upper, if you would say, world down into this lower world. Because everything that we do is all about connection and relationship. When we talk about our ceremonies, it's all tied with our relationship to the stars, to the moon. We're tied to each other. And then here we are. So I'm just going to say a few words in our language and then um, turn it back over to Wilfred. No, no, that's not what it is. Oh, no, that's not what it is. No, 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 and so we hear a constant of war. She said, Who can get this? And who are the daughters in a water on the hot car way? Nene put this to a summa. He the one, Nene on a water. Near the water, no no, there he was done in a gun of cest and all the donor, no connoisseur to the seven. Not just to give away water, a doctor and you want to know the gut code and a way work to know what I've got to the one. So essentially, um, when we start any of our ceremonies, we're tied to a star constellation that we call in our language on Wadara. In this language, people say, well, it's the Pleiades. But when Sky Woman leaves the other side of the sky to come to this lower world with life for the perpetual rejuvenation of life forever, that's what we're connected to. So anyways, um, I'm looking forward to this evening because uh, this is going to be my first time listening to Wilford's presentation, but I know we're in this time now that this knowledge of this turtle island is resurrecting up because for too long it was suppressed. And with this global climate emergency that we're heading into, scientists said if we listen to the indigenous wisdom and knowledge of this whole earth, maybe, then maybe we'll have a chance. So anyways, with that, welcome to each and every one of all of, welcome to each and every one of you and enjoy the presentation. Participation or listening 
and also in ensuring that we carry forward the knowledges that are shared with us today. So thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, it's a great honor to introduce Mr. Wilfred Buck this evening. I'm going to practice my Cree a little bit tonight, so you'll have to correct me. <laughs> um, Mr. Buck is an Inu uh, Cree Indigenous astronomer and consultant, author, educate, educator, addictions and cultural consultant, education consultant, Sundance chief, knowledge keeper, astrologer, artist, father, husband, portable planetarium owner and operator. <laughs> Wilfred originates from Opasiwa Cree Nation, OCN, and is a graduate of the University of Manitoba with two degrees in education. He has 25 years experience as an educator as well as being a science facilitator at MF, MFNERC for 15 years where he did extensive research in on Ininiu Atakosak, uh, STARS const constellation. Constellation, excuse me. <laughs> uh, he retired from that position on December 31st, 2020. Mr. Buck is considered the foremost authority on indigenous ast uh, astronomy in the world. Um, Mr. Buck also has three books published. Uh, published. Uh, let me try to get this right. Tipi Skawi Kisik Night Sky Stories. Um, I Have Lived Four Lives, which is a semi autobiography and Kichi Kisik, The Great Sky. The book, I Have Lived Four Lives, published by ARP Books of Winnipeg, Manitoba, is being used as a basis for a documentary film on his life and work. Producer Lisa Jackson is the creative force behind this project. Please welcome Mr. Buck. <laughs> Greetings, my relatives. I am uh, known as Opoamenegete uh, Dichigao. He has dreamt a dream and keeps it. And uh, it's been shortened to Opoame. Uh, and uh, it means a uh, dream keeper. And uh, so uh, a lot of the uh, energies that I, I encounter and a lot of the knowledge that's been passed on to me has to deal with Oamia, uh, with those dreams. And those dreams are connected to a Kichigizik, that great sky. And uh, I have the honor to uh, be uh, passed on certain knowledge from uh, my people about uh, our understanding of the cosmos, our understanding of our, our reality our understanding of our connection to everything that is around us, miiswa. We call that, uh, that term miiswa. It means all that is, and miiswa includes the known and the unknown. Because there's so much more that we don't know. They tell us we know very little of uh, what is out there. And uh, in, 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 our, uh, in our reality, in the physical world, but not, not only that, in the world of, of energy, there's so much out there that we have no idea what it is. So uh, we, we uh, will never begin being close to understand of uh, this reality that we inhabit. And so we're going to be talking about my people's understanding of what a is, those stars. I am Ine Nyo, Nyo is what we call ourselves in, uh, in, the, in Western Canada. Cree is uh, a, a term that was given to us by uh, for traders and uh, uh, the explorers, they, uh, they, they, keep, they found the term Christino, which is a, a French term, and they shortened it to Cree. We refer to ourselves as Inenio Nioho. And those two terms, Inenio Nioho, have one common root word, and that common root word is Nio. And in my, call, in my language, when we count, Piek, Niso, Nisto, Nio, Nio. So, we're in reference to the four. We are of the four. That's that's how we refer to ourselves, because our uh, one of our gracious stories tells us that uh, we come from another reality. We are Kishikuwak, uh, Atzabuk, 
And these terms, Kishikoga and Achaga, refer to beings of light, beings of energy, beings of light, and beings of spirit. And that's what we are. And we come to this place, we're Daishiki, we come to this earth, and we take a physical form, because we initially we are energy, we are light. And so in order to react and interact with our reality at this place, in this physical world, we have to take a physical form. And uh, our, our brother here related about uh, the uh, Pleiades, and uh, one of our origin stories also says that that's where we come from. We come from the Pleiades. My people call that Pagwankisik. Pagwankisik means the hole in the sky. And when referring to the hole in the sky, they're referring to a spatial anomaly. They're referring to a, a wormhole, a portal in this reality, an access point to another reality. And we're told that we come from other realities. So our people understand that there's other realities out there. What science is saying now is that uh, through uh, things like, uh, like uh, quantum theory, they're saying that there's multiple realities out there. And my, uh, our people understood this. They, they operated on this, this basis. And uh, they say when we sleep at night, our energy connects to that hole in the sky. And our energy connects to those multiple realities. And we're bombarded with infinite possibility. I like to use that term, bombarded with infinite possibility. <laughs> and, and, and so, when, when we sleep at night, we dream. So everybody, every, every, every being dreams. Even dogs, our, our pets, they dream. You see them at night, they're wagging the tails or they're making sounds. They're having a dream. So we're told this, as we sleep, we dream, we connect to that, that infinite possibilities that are out there. And we're bombarded with information. And uh, sometimes in our waking lives, we see something happen or someplace and we say, hey, I've been here before. Hey, I've seen this before. My French have a term for that, they call it déjà vu. And I'm sure every culture has their own term for it. This is that through the process of colonization, for my people, we lost probably about 85% of that knowledge base that we had prior to the coming of the Europeans. So a lot of that language has been lost, has been set aside, has been put to sleep. One of the elders said, it's not lost, it's dormant. And it's waiting to be revived. And so, we had understandings about these multiple realities. And when we sleep at night, we're bombarded with information. And we're told that uh, this information give us, gives us infinite possibilities of things that could happen. Or maybe when things, when a chain of events happen in a certain way, it becomes reality. And for indigenous people, pretty much all over the world, we view dreams as a very important part of our reality. Those dreams are part of us, and we are part of those dreams. They say that our dreams basically are the basis of our reality. So dreams are very important to indigenous people all over the world. And the dreams hold a very important place in our reality. Dreams give us hope. Dreams give us guidance. Dreams give us healing. Dreams give us understanding. Dreams give us ideas. Dreams give us questions. Dreams give us visions of things we haven't seen. They give us all these things. One of the elders went so far as saying, if you look around this reality right now, and you see everything in this reality, you know that at one point, this was an idea. This was a dream somebody saw, a picture of in your dream, and they woke up and said, hey, I have this idea, this dream, I see, I see this vision. And they went about and they made it a reality. So one of the ideas that I'm putting forward to all the uh, astrophysicists and scientific academics is that uh, dreams are, are not something that are super, 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 super superstitious. They're not something uh, that that's uh, not part of us. They're, they're part of our reality. They're part of our everyday lives, and they, they, they make the basis of our, our reality. And so dreams play a very important part in, in, in our reality. Even scientists dream, though, though they, would, they would not uh, say, that, say that it's a dream that they, they got an idea from. But yeah, it's, it's part of that process. For, for indigenous people, it's part of the methodological process that we go through, are the basis of dreams. Everybody has their own methodological process in coming to knowledge, arriving at knowledge. And one of our basic understandings is that we are energy, we are light. And part of that energy, part of that light is manifested in Kwame, those dreams.